Hi, this is Dr. Vallesh. Welcome to Pharmacology Simplified. In this short video, I am going to explain why noradrenaline is not used in the management of anaphylaxis. This topic is important for your viva, for your entrance exams and practice. Unlikely that this question will be asked in your theory exam or your practical exams. First, we have to uh, have an overview of anaphylaxis. What exactly happens in anaphylaxis? Anaphylaxis is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. It is mediated through IgE. The first thing that has to happen is exposure of the body to the allergen. The moment the first exposure of the uh, particular allergen happens, B cells uh, get converted into plasma cells and will start producing IgE. Large amounts of IgE are produced. These IgE will sit on the mast cells. Now the mast cells have become primed mast cells or ready mast cells and they will produce a lot of chemical mediators and they will store them, uh, store these chemical mediators within the mast cells. They are waiting for the allergen to come back again. When this happens, when there is a re-exposure of the uh, allergens of the same allergen, what is going to happen? Primed mast cells degranulate leading to release of lot of chemical mediators. Remember that this degranulation is happening on re-exposure, not at the first exposure to the allergen. And out of the different chemicals released, histamine is the most important one that is important for the anaphylaxis part. There are other mediators as well, cryptase, carboxypropidase, proteoglycans. They are not that important as, as important as histamine. Now, before we move on, there is another term uh, in addition to anaphylaxis. This is anaphylactoid reaction. What exactly is anaphylactoid reaction? Anaphylactoid reaction also is the same thing, except that there is no allergen involved. The absence of an allergen or re-exposure of the allergen, if there is spontaneous degranulation of mast cells, leading to release of large quantities of histamine and various other uh, symptoms similar to anaphylaxis. It is called as anaphylactoid reaction. It is also called as non-immune anaphylaxis and pseudo-anaphylaxis. The names uh, are pretty much explanatory, self-explanatory. But these days, anaphylactoid reaction is not used that frequently. But still, sometimes uh, some examiners ask this as a part of viva. Okay, let us move on. So, we had, uh, we were, uh, where were we? Uh, histamine was released. The moment histamine is released, it gets released into the entire body. There is systemic release of histamine. This histamine acts on different locations in the body. Perhaps the three most important locations are bronchi, blood vessels, the skin. In the bronchi, specifically it causes bronchoconstriction. This bronchoconstriction causes wheezing and respiratory collapse. Wheezing is a symptom. Respiratory collapse is the uh, thing that will cause death. Okay, The fatal uh, incident leading to death in anaphylaxis is respiratory collapse because of extensive bronchoconstriction. The second place where it acts is the uh, blood vessels where it produces vasodilatation. Because of vasodilatation, what happens? All the fluid starts moving out of the blood vessels into the tissues. There is swelling of the tissues leading to angioedema. Now, in the blood vessels, since all the fluid has moved out, what happens to the blood pressure? It starts falling. There is hypotension, there is shock. Remember that all these things are happening because histamine is activating H1 receptors. H2 receptors also are there. These H2 receptors are sitting in the stomach, but they are not that important when it comes to anaphylaxis. H1 receptors, activation of H1 receptors is the uh, most important thing that is uh, leading to all these uh, features. Next, on the skin also it activates H1 receptors leading to urticaria or hives, itching and flushing. Flushing also is contributed by vasodilatation. Now, all the blue colored ones here are symptoms, symptoms of anaphylaxis. The red colored ones are the danger symptoms, danger signs, danger clinical features that are the cause of death. So, with this information in your mind, if you have to treat anaphylaxis, what should be your treatment objective? You want to save the patient who is having anaphylaxis, you have to prevent respiratory collapse, you have to prevent the development of shock, you have to reverse the hypotension. So, all these are the important uh, treatment objectives for anaphylaxis. First, there is emergency resuscitation. Any emergency, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's, uh, it is anaphylaxis or poisoning. First, you have to do ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation, acts by various mechanisms. So that apart, the two most important treatment goals when it comes to anaphylaxis is to immediately relieve bronchoconstriction and to immediately relieve the shock or hypotension. And a single drug is able to do both of these and that drug is epinephrine or adrenaline. The dose for adrenaline for the management of anaphylaxis is 0.5 ml. Sometimes it is 0.3 to 0.5 ml of 1 in 1000 solution and the route of administration is intramuscular. I think that this is something that every healthcare professional should be knowing how to manage anaphylaxis by administering adrenaline and epinephrine 0.5 ml of 1 in 1000 solution intramuscularly. Okay, the same drug is administered for the prevention of or for the relief of shock. 
or to reverse hypotension. But it acts by two different mechanisms to achieve both of these. Bronchoconstriction it relieves, adrenaline relieves bronchoconstriction by acting on beta 2 receptors that are located in the bronchi. Adrenaline reverses hypotension by producing vasoconstriction. This is by acting on alpha 1 receptors that are located in the blood vessels. So, two different receptor systems, two different actions. Now, another important thing that you need to remember is that epinephrine is the physiological antagonist of histamine. What is the meaning of physiological antagonist of histamine? Previous slide we saw that histamine was causing vasodilatation and bronchoconstriction by acting on H1 receptors. Now, adrenaline does the opposite. It will produce bronchodilatation and vasoconstriction but by acting on an entirely different receptor system, histamine H1 receptors, adrenaline adrenergic receptors, histamine bronchoconstriction, adrenaline bronchodilatation, histamine vasodilatation, adrenaline vasoconstriction, but entirely different receptor systems, effects are totally opposite. This type of uh, an observation, this type of phenomenon is called as physiological antagonism. This is something that you must remember. Now, once these two things are done, once you have saved the patient, all the others are supportive. You have to counter the effects of histamine by giving H1 antihistaminics. You have to do supportive management that depends on the patient presentation. And finally, before you discharge the patient back to home, one thing that you must do is that you have to advise the patient, give patient education about the allergen identification and avoidance of the same allergen and this acts by behavioral modification. So by this time, uh, it is very clear that adrenaline is the most important drug when it comes to the treatment of anaphylaxis. Okay? We also have uh, EpiPens that are auto injectors. These are available. Uh, what, uh, these, are, these will be with the patients themselves. The moment the patients will uh, feel that they, have, they are developing anaphylaxis, what they will do? They will simply open the cap. They will inject that into the thigh. Okay? There, the adrenaline gets released into the uh, intramuscular uh, through the intramuscular route and it will immediately start countering the effects of histamine. Okay, so this is how we manage anaphylaxis. Now the question, why adrenaline? Why not noradrenaline? The answer is very simple. It's a single line answer. Before we come to that, let us quickly review the different agonists and the different adrenergic receptors. So there are five important adrenergic receptors, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. Adrenaline activates all five adrenergic receptors. Noradrenaline activates only four adrenergic receptors. It does not activate beta 2. It activates alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 3. Next, we have isoprenaline, which activates three adrenergic receptors, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. It does not have action on alpha receptors at all. Next, we have dopamine, which activates only two receptors, alpha 1, alpha 2. It also has action on, it, it also is an agonist on D1, D2 dopaminergic receptors. But adrenergic receptor system, alpha 1, beta 1. Next, we have dobutamine which acts only on beta 1 receptor. Okay, it's a pure beta 1 receptor agonist. Now, looking at this chart, what is the answer for this question? Why not noradrenaline in the management of anaphylaxis? Answer is very simple. It does not have beta 2 receptor agonism. Noradrenaline has no beta 2 action. Beta 2 receptors were important. We saw in the previous slide, beta 2 receptor agonism was important for producing bronchodilatation. Noradrenaline does not have beta 2 action. It cannot relieve bronchoconstriction and that is the reason why you should not use noradrenaline in the management of anaphylaxis. I hope I have simplified this topic for you. Thank you. Namaste. Have a nice day.